Shepard. Welcome back to the Sharon Moore Show. It's time for a segment that I call Extraordinary Drummers. Today we have just that. A dear friend of mine who's played over 500, who's played on over 500 hit go records, including people like Diana Ross, uh, Bill, Bill Withers, and so many more. Later on, you're going to get to see all of the beautiful plaques that he did. Hey, would you help me welcome a dear friend of mine who's been voted one of the influential drummers of all times by Rolling Stones magazine, Mr. James Gatson. Well, hello, James. Hello. How you doing, Sharon? Hey, hey. How's everything? Look at me, y'all. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> he said, look at me. You know, that's one of the things that really excite me, that when you say my name, you know, of course, I used to be a drummer, but I'm not a drummer around you. Yeah, around I you, I'm a plumber. In, I used to sneak in the B.B. Kings on Sundays when you were playing at the, the gospel brunch. And check you out. I enjoyed you. I, I, I got some. I got some. I stole some time. You, <laughs> you stole you know? your old stuff, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you stole it back from yourself, man. <laughs> you know what, man? I can't think of no one in the industry that have influenced generations of drummers such as yourself. What a person! What a body of work you have. That's very flattering. Huh? It's all all praises to God Almighty. You know, uh, without him, I'm nothing, and that would would have never happened under the, all circumstances from which I came to be able to be a drummer. It, it was definitely him. Five hundred. Now help me say this right. Five hundred gold gold hit records. Yeah. I didn't even own five hundred records. <laughs> he yeah. did five hundred hit gold records. Thirty-eight thousand and something wow. records. Period that I played on. A friend of mine, George Mitchell, uh, researched it and sent it to me. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know because I've been playing for a long time. And uh, <clears throat> that is a blessing. That's a blessing. Did you, what did you say, 38,000? That's what he said, 38,000 38, something. Is that 38,000 in sales or 38,000 no, individual 30, records? individual records. Record. Wow. You know, so that is a blessing. He researched this, George Mitchell did. And I thought that that was wonderful, you know, and I know I didn't get paid for all of them, but <laughs> it's cool anyway. <laughs> They're out there. Some of those records were just tri just huge. They were literally a fad and a movement, the Diana Ross Hangover and some of the other records. I mean, disco. Marvin Gaye, I Want You, that was a, that was pretty, you know, Motown too. Uh, I that, Want You. You know, The Temptations had a big one I played on, and I can't think of the name of it, but. It was pretty big, and then Michael Jackson, uh, the Jackson Five at that time, Dancing Machine. Oh man, and, you know, she's I a dancing machine. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, oh. got to be real. Um, oh, got to, who was that? That was uh, the e e e emotions. No, that was. Um, oh, Cheryl Lynn. Cheryl Lynn. Uh, got to know, be real. Yeah, I had to play that sometime when I was out doing a hotel circuit. Yeah. <laughs> reunited, the peaches and Oh, Herb, reunited. Uh, I will survive. Um, Oh, Gloria Gaynor. I mean, I can't think. It's been, I've been pretty blessed. I, you know, I, can, I can't go on because I don't remember a lot of that stuff unless somebody would say something about it, you know. How did it feel when you heard it on the radio blaring out of cars it and in the discos? It felt wonderful. It felt wonderful. That is, a, a you know, it, because when I came out here, I had a pretty rough time. You know, I had taken some jobs other than music, and I would be saying to myself, you know, if I could just hear myself on the radio, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, say it, brother. You know, and then God blessed me where he did an abundance of music for me, you know. And that's a blessing because, I mean, hey, man, the work that I did, that's a blessing. You know, that's truly a blessing. So I'm sorry. It's all about Jesus with me. Well, up here is Saturday Night Fever, the Bee Gees. I did some some of the, some of their records, some of their singles, and I did the soundtrack, Saturday Night Fever, up there at the top there. Right here is Marvin Gaye, I Want You. That was a big one. What is this, Gloria Gaynor. Uh, when we did that, I, uh, I Will Survive, but that was her, her album. Uh, Uh, Reunited, Peaches and Herb. Um, and this is Peaches and Herb. I'm making it went double platinum. 
Down here is a, I, I'm just a love machine. <laughs> I won't work for nobody but you and uh, making it. David Lawton, he got a big record. Um, that's good. All that features in here, but uh, the emotions, big record there with them. Uh, Bill Withers. All that over there, Bill Withers. What one, which, which records by Bill Withers were they? I did Use Me, Lean On Me, Kissing My Love. I mean, I did more than that, but those were the, those were the big hits, you know. James, tell me where you're standing at in the history of that board there. This console I purchased from Smokey Robinson. It's one of the consoles that they used when they came to Los Angeles. I think this is the first console that they used. And a gentleman by the name of Dean Jensen built them. It's called a quad eight board. It's got about 20 faders and it sounds wonderful. It has a wonderful warm sound. And uh, it's, 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 it sounds great and it's probably a lot, it's a lot of history. A lot of Motown stuff was cut on here. A lot of hits, you know. I purchased from Smokey this and a 16 track machine that is out again, being refurbished again. You know, because I like to do a lot of analog stuff too, especially the rhythm, the drums and the bass. You know, cutting that on the, cutting that on tape. You know, it sounds, it's, it's a great sound. So, James, we were saying that you literally influence generations of, of drummers. When I go to NAMM show, when I uh, go backstage in places, people say, I came from James Gatson. How do you feel about that? Well, it's very, very flattering. Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, the guys before me, I listened to them. But, you know, all gifts, you know, I've been pretty blessed. I've been on 500 Gold Records, come from God Almighty. And, uh, you know, he lets you use these gifts. If, you, you know, if you misuse them, he'll take, take them away from you. But, you know, all gifts come from God. And I know that I have been blessed to do, you know, to do what I did from where I came, from whence I came, however you want to say it. You know, so that's, you know, all praises to him. And, and I thank everybody that likes, you know, that liked my work. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing for somebody to love what you do, like what you do, you know. So that's great. I, you know, I'm, you know, hey, I'm flattered. James, you said it like the old folks say, from which you come. Where are you from, James? Of course we know that, but for the... The newer generations. Where are you from? Where are you from? And what influenced you to be a drummer? I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. My father was a drummer. In the 30s, he played with J. Mike Shan and a lot of the people that came through there, the Count Basie people, and a lot of those people that came through there during the Prohibition days in Kansas City, when the nightclub stayed open all night. He, unfortunately, didn't do so well in his latter days and. So he didn't want me to be in the music business at all. He bought me a, a trumpet, a cornet, when I was going to school that I could play, you know, in the band, uh, you know, play the marches and stuff. And I didn't have this gold tooth in the front, so it was very hard for me to play that trumpet. And I, you know, I didn't care for it anyway. Actually, I didn't inspire to be a, mu a musician. I was a doo-wop singer. You know, I made a record when I was 14 years old for Federal. We had a group called Kansas City Carpets. And uh, we we made a record for Federal at the same time they signed James Brown. He set a record out called "Why Do You Do Me This Way." That was James Brown's record. Ours was called "Chicken Backs" and "Why Do I?" And uh, he, uh, you know, my mother wouldn't let us go on the road, which was great after years from what I've seen. You know, because we were so square. You know, we probably wouldn't have lasted. So that was a good thing. But you know, I, my aspiration was to be a do mop singer. So I went into the Air Force. Well, I was a juvenile delinquent. You know, I said, I better go in the Air Force. I'm hanging around and I don't want to go to the penitentiary or get killed. When I came out, unbeknownst to me, my brother had a band. He had a working band. He was a good, he learned how to play the guitar. I was in there for four years. I did not know. So when I got out of the Air Force, he said, come on in the band, and he had me on the front, at the front line. I'd dance and 
do the little Richard stuff and all that Elvis and everybody and I could play three or four chords on the piano. And so that's what I would do until the bassist left, the bass player left, and he went with Jay McShann. <coughs> uh, this was in the latter years of Jay McShann. But he left and went with him, you know, because they were working all the time. He was making good money. And um, the drummer who could play bass, Harry Wilkins, he, uh, my brother said, well, hey, man, you got your drums. It wasn't like, hey, do you want it? You got them if you want to be in the band. So but I'm left-handed. So the way that the drums were set up, I just sit down, and that's how I learned how to play I was, you know, I could play street beats and stuff like that. I was American Legion drum corps. We used to open up, uh, you know, the, during the time that the ball uh, clubs, the baseball clubs, were segregated, where they had the Kansas City Monarchs and the Indianapolis Clowns and all those different black baseball teams. We'd march into the stadium, you know, and I could play the street beats and stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't sit down and play a set of drums for nothing. So I did have a little knowledge of it so uh i just had to get it together it took me a while to get it together i'd ask people about this that and other and practice and practice and you know god bless me you know because hey i'm 21 years old when i'm learning how to play drums most people you know at six years old they start the music business you know so i have truly been blessed you know as far as that's concerned james how did you get from from that section of your life and that phase of your life to becoming one of the, well, you have to say it the way it is, most recorded musicians ever. How did you make that transition? Well, some friends of mine were on the Dean Martin show. I'm in Kansas City. I thought they had made the big times. They said, come on out. They paid my way out here. I couldn't play their music because I was, by that time, I'm playing jazz. I'm playing a lot of outside stuff. And, play, and, and the gig for, that for me was playing with the organ trios, you know. So I couldn't play the R&B. You know, I might could play the twist, but they wasn't doing that no more. That was a long time ago. So <clears throat> they couldn't use me, so they fired me. Or they, you know, however they did. And it took me a while. I met a gentleman out here who I, I previously came out here playing with the organ trios, John Boudreau, famous drummer out of New Orleans, God rest his soul, he passed away about six months ago. We exchanged numbers and he said, I'll get you a gig. So he got me a gig with Charles Wright on Thursday nights. I, we made 12, he paid, well, he paid me $12 a night. I would get on the bus with my drums. And he fired me about five times because I couldn't play no R&B. So I guess he couldn't get nobody else, probably not. So he said, hey man, you want the gig, you got to just play fours. I said, okay, so I'll just play fours. For about eight months, no fields. I said, okay, and I started hearing what was happening because beforehand, I couldn't really, I'd listen to the R&B stuff and I might play the pocket for, for, for maybe a bar and I'm gone, you know, I'm stretching, or, you know, I'm just different. So, uh, I got that together. He was a studio musician. Also, he had he played the chinks. He was left-handed. He played the chinks on the guitar. They fly the, fly the tracks in from all over the world for him to do that. He was famous for the chink thing. And so uh, I sung a song called Love Land. He, he and I used to write after the rehearsals, and uh, we wrote this song called Love Land. Although you know I didn't get any credit for it. You know you know we still. We're still a little strange with each other about that today. Uh, because he took another song that I wrote that uh, Robert Palmer did that was a big hit. Uh, he took that, you know, and copyrighted and everything because I didn't know a lot about the business. But anyway, I sang this Love Land, which this was a big hit. And um, I got disenchanted with the group because uh, I was told, you know, he told me, said, hey man, everything you write from now on, I got to have half the writers and all the publishing. I thought that was awful. So I just, you know, I finally eased on out of the group. I had met Bill Withers through Charles Wright. I think Charles might have been, might have managed Bill for a week or two or something. And um, all the guys, you know, a gentleman by the name of Ray Jackson was tutoring Bill at the time before Bill got famous. Um, 
and um, Ray asked us, hey man, you wanna play this gig? And, you know, pay a bill and a half and at a park. And so, I said, okay, yeah, played it. And so we played the gig and um, I think I went on the road with Bill and not, none of the Watts band uh, guys were playing with him at that time. A uh, famous producer, the one that produced Gloria, Damn, I can't think of it. It's a shame I can't think of his name. Michael Stokes, yeah. He was playing keyboard. That's who it was. And so, uh, intermittently, the guys left the Watts band, and we would rehearse out here, just rehearse before, even before Bill Withers, out here in my garage for about six months. We was rehearsing this play. And so we had gotten tight anyway for, by being, you know, by playing with the Watts band. And so, Bill, uh, from what I hear, Booker T produced uh, the first album that he had, Ain't No Sunshine. You know, I didn't play on that. A lot of people think I did because they see me on the road, you know, you know, in different videos and play, playing on that, uh, you know, song. But uh, we came in my garage for about six months and worked certain things out. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, you know that the rest is history. Uh, I don't want to drop no bad vibes. You know. And I got you. Tell me about. I'm going to ask, um, if I may. Five hundred hit records. Gold records. I'm. Yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Jay. Mean, I played on thirty-eight thousand some some five hundred. I can't remember what it is. A friend of mine, George Mitchell, uh, researched it and said, "Man, I didn't know I played on that many." records 38,000 records yeah over 38,000 records so he said that um he, he he sent me the thing said man that's pretty impressive I said wow so I was blessed to play on 500 gold records which was great you know I mean I mean I, I, I was so blessed at the time that every month I was on the charts playing no no less than five songs that were on the charts for 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 you know two or three years I mean that happened, so that was a blessing, you know, and uh, you know it, it had to be God, you know, because I mean it sure wasn't me. Tell me someone that can you remember? Or of course you do, but some of the artists that you've played for. I heard you mention Diana Ross earlier. Oh, man, Diana you you you, Ross. you did you did you play on that Love Hangover? I played on. Love that was Hangover. you on that. Yeah. You know we was in the clubs on that. You know. <laughs> the Temptations, uh, oh man, the Jackson Five, Motown stuff. Most a lot of the p people at Motown, and a lot of other things. Dyke and the Blazers was the first hit. I didn't play on Funky Broadway, but I played on We Got More Soul, and um, Let a Woman Be a Woman and a Man Be a Man. A lot mm. of his stuff. Uh, that was the first hit record that I played on. Did you play it, on some of the Tavari stuff? Yeah, I played on. Uh, what was that record? Heaven must be missing an angel. Right. Oh man. Right. Tell me some more. Tell me some of the other records. That gentleman, he uh Freddie Parent produced that. He was the first one to use me when I came to Motown and I played on a record called Do It Baby. I uh, remember that. Miracles that was yeah. old after Smokey left. Do so, it, do it, do it, babe. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, gonna take so, me back um, to the projects yeah, now, James. I mean, so I can't remember <laughs> everything. I mean, a lot of Motown stuff, a lot of other people's stuff. Uh, Cheryl Lynn got to be real. I mean, it's, I mean, I, I, I've been blessed, you know, because I was playing on so I was at the right place at the right time, and I was with the right man. Yes, sir. God Almighty. So. I can't remember everything. Sometimes people would say, hey, did you play? I said, yeah, I played on this. And a lot. I won't take any credit for the stuff that I didn't play on. Like a lot of times I see people will ask me on the internet, hey, man, you, that sounds like you. Did, did you? Sometimes yes, but sometimes, you know, a lot of times no. I, I, I wouldn't take anybody's credit. You know, that those who played, you know, those who did what they did, that's a blessing. You didn't take nobody's credit. But there was only about two or three of you guys cruising, handling everything, Smokey though. Robinson, cruising. You I did mean, cruising? I didn't yeah. know that. I remember that, you know, especially the song, because I think we did about two takes on the Saturday. It was Chuck Rainey, David T. Walker, and me, and Sonny Burke. And the session went so fast, I said, man, I love this. You know, bam. Just like uh, I will survive, you know. I played on that one. Too. You played on that. Uh, was was that was that Gloria Gaynor? Yeah, that was Gloria Gaynor. I will survive. You did that. 
and we worked on the B, that was the B side. We we did that in one take. What happened? We was working on a, another record all day with Freddie Perry, the producer, and he called New York and let them hear it. Said, "Well, he changed this, that, and the So he said uh, he didn't want to pay uh, um, overtime. So he said, "Hey, man, let's cut this." In fact, I'll put the intro. No, 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 no. He put, and so he said, "Don't worry about that." So he counted it all. We played it. Thank you, gentlemen. The next thing I know, that was a big <laughs> disco record. Huge hit. Right. When these songs come out, I played on a, a one or two being around you myself, and I remember what it felt like as I traveled the city on the on the different tours. I could be in Newark or somewhere, and I hear it on the radio or coming out of a car with the with the uh, enormous, enormous uh, size of what some of those records did. Did you hear them out in the street? How did you feel about that? Well, by the time I got in the studio, I wasn't down the street. I, you know, I was out with Bill Withers, and um, I didn't hear anything that I did prior to that other than the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band. I sang a song called Love Land that was number two pop. I played on Express Yourself that Charles did. That was a big Oh, uh, you played on Express Yourself? Um, yeah, and, uh, you know. Oh, that we, was a good we'd record. We'd be out on the road. I'd be, lo I'd be listening to The Temptations, you know. Papa got a rolling, Papa was a rolling stone, and Stevie Wonder, uh, Superstition, and I, we'd be listening to those. Al Green, you know, we'd, I'd be just be listening. I had no idea that I'd be doing uh, studio work, and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of writing a book because I don't want to get kind of deep into that because. Somebody's going to be mad anyway when I tell it what happened. <laughs> but anyway, I was blessed to get in the studios. A gentleman by the name of Ben, uh, ben Barrett was a contractor. He saw me coming out of the, the record plant, the famous record plant, which was off of 3rd Street near La Cienega, where all the, you know, all the big groups recorded during those days. James Gapson, man, I've been looking, looking for you for two years. Can you read music? I said, yeah, I was lying. Motown's looking for you, man. I said, okay, so they called me, and I didn't, I, to me, I messed up quite a bit over there. But later on, I found out James Carmichael said, keep him because he has good time. But what I did do, I would come home and learn, I'd get in the books and learn how to read. So that was, that worked because Motown wrote out all the stuff, you know, they wrote out the open, close, hi-hats, whatever symbol you hit, whatever time you hit and everything so I came home and I studied and studied and studied and I finally got it together you know because it was you know, I'd get a headache in there because I'm trying to study I'm studying the producers would tell me one thing and I'm thinking I said well this don't look like it's what it is what's, what's on the paper and you know come to find out it wasn't so I, you know but it, I was a blessing because that's what I'm saying it was a blessing it's all about Jesus Christ I eventually got it together and I got to play on a lot of big records. James, did you know that you had something special? You had a a certain feel, a certain sound, a certain pocket on the drums. Where did that well, come from? And did you know you have it? That's spiritual. I mean, that's 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 the, that's the man upstairs. That's spirit. That's that's the spirit. You know, making it feel a certain way. That's the spirit. Mm. Yeah. So when you're sitting on the drums. You can feel him. You can feel God talking to you. Well, you know, it I was at you. Motown one day, and I could feel something, the presence of God saying, well, hey, you're going to be all right. And I said, wow, I'm up here at Motown. I mean, Motown, because that was, the, that was the epitome of being a studio musician, especially out here in L.A. for the black guys. I know it was for me. Cause I did, I got tired of traveling. Cause you know I used to travel in a station wagon. I played with Hank Ballard and the Midnighters, the guy that originated the Twist, and we'd be traveling a station wagon all over the, all over the United States. I mean we'd be here in Los Angeles this one day, and we had to be in Little Rock, Arkansas tomorrow night. I got tired of that. I was young. They called me the Cobra, cause I didn't sleep. I'm weaving with the car driving. And you also sing now, I know. Yeah, but I had a I sang a record called Love Land by the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band, was, which was number two pop at that time. But here we go, here's some of Mr. James Gatson, Extraordinary Drummer's new tracks. A warm and cozy fireplace And it's just me and you As we move from the couch To this basket rug 
what's it leading up to? And you're sipping your wine. And this is you singing, huh, James? I'm having my brew. Tell me, what could be the next thing on the menu? Now, I don't mean no disrespect. And please don't think I'm rude And I know that you are a very nice girl And you have your rules you know, you know. The feeling is right For this kind of groove Shall we try the next thing on the menu? Music, man. Oh, thank you very much. Come on now. I call it the school. A lot of people say old school, but I call it the school. That's where it all came from. You the said the or the? The. The school. T H E. Woo! The school. Now, we still hear that old backbeat on that stuff. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, it's yeah. just something about the way you approach music and play. You never rush music, you never attack music. It's just laid out like butter. Well, it's, it's all about the groove and the feel, you know. That's, that's the whole thing, you know, and drums are very uh, important. I mean, the, the Africans had it, the Indians had it, the people in Europe had it, the Norsemen had drums. I mean, and they all used them for a specific reason, was to warn people, or, or, you know, that was one of the main reasons. So, you know, drums are very spiritual, and uh, it's all about the way that they're supposed to feel, too. I mean, there's a lot of different styles of drumming, but the true drumming is, the, you know, it's a certain way you can feel it. The Indians would let you, you know, they hey, they, they they let the pioneers know. I mean, it would be kind of rough on them. They could hear that. Uh, they could hear the. Um, I don't know what to say. In the in the in those beats that mm -hmm. they were in trouble. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The language. Yeah. They could feel you mm -hmm. know that that urgency. You mm -hmm. know. So it's all about. This is a very spiritual instrument, and so I'm just glad that I was blessed. To do whatever work that I did, you know that's all about Jesus. For me. Let me tell you, thank you, thank you so very much for letting me come down and talk with you for being on my show, man. Well, thank you for having me, man. Thank you so much for having me. Love you, brother. Love you too. Love you, man. I still oh. feel like a a kid just sitting next to you, just being oh, with well, you. Why? <laughs> I love that too. I love that. He looks at me like I look at him, you know? Right, that's right. Because, well, I mean, you know, hey, I used to sneak in and listen to you on Sundays, you know? Well, I never knew that. I wish oh, you yeah. would have raised your hand to buy you a drink or something, you know? Well, I, it was cool. I love that, actually. What am I doing wrong up here? You weren't doing, <laughs> doing nothing wrong. Thank you. All right. Mr. James Gatson. My pleasure. Drummer extraordinaire <laughs> here on the Sharon Moore Show. All right. Thank you, sir.